our next keynote comes from a company delivering up to 30% of the global web traffic and gathering insights into the most significant trends which are redefining the requirements and architecture of tomorrow's web. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Mr. John Dillon, Vice President Marketing EMEA at Akamai Technologies. everybody. Um, quite an entrance. I've never had dry ice before, but there you go. Um, so my name is John Dillon. I work for Akamai Technologies. Um, as was mentioned in my introduction, we deliver every day around 15 to 30 percent of all web traffic. So you've probably all used Akamai uh, today. So if you've done some shopping this morning, if, you, if you've visited your favorite social media website, if you've done, uh, looked at any video online, chances are behind the scenes Akamai has been uh, helping to deliver that content to, to you, to your mobile device, to your PC, to make sure you have a great experience. Um, you're not going to be able to see this from the very back. I think this is probably the biggest room I've ever been in as well. Um, this is actually the Akamai platform. It's the best way of, uh, of illustrating it. You can see this if you have an Apple device. It's on the uh, iOS store uh, called Apple Net. Every one of these little green lines is where we have one of our servers. We have two, over 200,000 servers deployed around the world, very close to the end user. We aim to be uh, within 85 to 90 percent or accessible by 85 to 90 percent of all the eyeballs on the internet, one network hop away from those eyeballs so that we can give a really, really good experience. So this gives us a bit of insight, allows us to see really what's happening on the internet. Uh, and we see some of the things that are happening, some of the innovation that is being driven, some of the new ways that people are looking to use uh, the, the internet and the, and the connectivity that they have. Um, so to start with, I wanted to talk a little bit about um, innovation, uh, and then I'm going to talk about what that innovation is driving and the role that Akamai plays, I'll, I'll touch on at the very end. Uh, but to start with, let's start with the definition of what, it, uh, what innovation really is. Uh, so innovation is really all about taking an idea and actually translating it through a product or service into something that provides value to you. And there are two types of innovation. There are uh, incremental, evolutionary innovations that happen, and then there are complete transformations, things that get uh, invented or created that transform the way that we live our lives today. I'm going to touch on both of these, but to start with, to give you an illustration of what I'm talking about, I'm going to give some historical examples. So, um, when people talk about what was the very first invention uh, in, in mankind's history, uh, typically what comes up is the wheel. So the wheel was invented in 3500 BC. Uh, interestingly enough, it wasn't the very first invention because we'd already, which apparently history shows us that we were sailing around in ships, uh, that we'd already discovered and, and invented musical instruments, and we did all of those things before we came across the wheel. Uh, and of course, the wheel now is pretty much fundamental to everything. If you have a, a traditional wristwatch, not one of the, the newer ones, but a traditional wrist, wristwatch, um, it wouldn't exist if the, if the wheel hadn't been invented. So think about pretty much anything and everything you use today. Kind of the wheel is fundamental to it. Uh, the next fundamental innovation was, was steam power and the steam engine. So steam was invented or first discovered actually in the first century BC. Uh, but it wasn't really put to practical use until uh, around 1712 when the steam engine was invented. Uh, and a few years later, um, the steam engine evolved and actually rotary power. So the steam engine combined with a wheel, and they fi figured out that they could use steam power to drive continuous rotation. And so trains, ships, pretty much any, any mode of transportation, these two in innovations kind of are, are, the, are the backbone of those uh, usage today. And steam, of course, was the, the foundation of the Industrial Revolution, so it did much, much more than just trans transportation. Uh, the next one was, was, uh, was electricity, and we were literally all in the dark until 1880, when Thomas Edison, among others, invented the, the light bulb. Um, and, of course, power today, even today, electricity, the, the fundamental driving force, uh, the power source behind creation of electricity is steam power. So you see the, the trend here. So electricity came along, Electricity, a few years later, around the mid-1900s, was the invention of the transistor, which allowed us to have all of these devices and computers and, and telecommunications, all the things that we take for granted today. And finally, the telegraph. 
Now, telegraph, if you look telegraph up in the dictionary, what telegraph means is actually transporting information from one place to another without anything physical uh, being transported. So the first telegraph was people literally lighting fires on the top of hills to send smoke signals to one another, then sending light flashes to one another, and then with electricity and Morse code, sending um, Morse code signals over wires, more recently, wirelessly, with radio and television. And so all of these things kind of uh, form the, back, the backbone, the foundation of the internet today. Without these inventions, we wouldn't have the internet. So if these are the things that have driven uh, innovation in the past, the question is, what's the innovation spark of today? What is, if you look at it out, out in the hall and you see all of those startup companies, what's the fundamental spark that's driving their innovation? What would, if they didn't have this thing, what, you know, they probably wouldn't be in existence today. So it's something very simple, and it's something that's come up, uh, about as a consequence of a number of innovations, as we talked about this morning. It's something that adds new capabilities to existing products, but it's also something that allows us to imagine completely new and different things, new things that were, were unimaginable beforehand. And it's something that we as human beings have appreciated since the moment of creation. If you look at this picture, um, you'll see the, the, there's a, a, an umbilical cord that's connecting the, the newborn baby uh, to its mother. And it's getting everything that it's, need, it's needing. It's getting all of the nutrition, all of the information that is required for that, that fetus to develop into a, into a baby. And it is a connection. It's connections. I would argue that if you take connections away, much of the innovation that's happening today wouldn't be possible. It just would not be possible. We, we find when we can't connect to the internet, we kind of we struggle, we, we suffer. And many, many of the innovations today, if they can't connect, they're kind of useless. They don't work and they don't function. So take, if, if you take any existing product, uh, there's a classic example that's often used of the toothbrush. If you take a, a, something as simple as a toothbrush and you connect it, then you ideate. You think about the things that you can now do with that toothbrush. So the simplest things are monitor how, how long your surface, so your child that's using it, how long are they using it. Uh, maybe you send that to their dentist. But maybe it could be more advanced. I was actually at Mobile World Congress this year, earlier this year, and Oral-B, uh, Braun Oral-B, the you know, leading manufacturer of uh, electronic toothbrushes, they actually had a stand at Mobile World Congress. And it's like, why would they be there? And they had this new toothbrush that has uh, accelerometers and motion sensors inside it. And it actually, you put your camera on the mirror, and it's actually, the camera is monitoring your movements so that you can see exactly, it actually is showing you areas of your mouth that you haven't cleaned yet by using motion sensing. Take it a step further, maybe this toothbrush can monitor for blood traces if you've got gum problems or bacterial issues and can be sending that information directly via the cloud to your, your dentist so that they can call you in proactively for treatment. So by connecting the toothbrush, maybe in 10, 15 years, we'll all have better teeth. Hopefully in the UK, we, all, we always get uh, stereotyped as having very bad teeth in the UK, so this could be good for us. Uh, it's happening today across all industries. Uh, and it's allowing us to imagine transformative new products and services. The connected car is being talked about in the future. Without connectivity, the connected car, kind of the name gives it away. It wouldn't exist. So there are three types today of, of, of connectivity. The one that we're most familiar with and the one that we all take advantage of is the ability to connect and have access to services on our mobile devices. Uh, so I, you know, I find Uber, I find it very frustrating when I visit a city now that doesn't have Uber, so I have to actually hail a taxi the old-fashioned way. I can't sit in the comfort of a restaurant and actually call a taxi. There are connected things, thermostats, but pretty much anything than anyone that's wearing a wearable device. We're connecting anything and everything to the, to the Internet. And the rise of the machines is a kind of scary future that was from the Terminator movie, which is when these things start to talk to one another. So when I'm approaching a, a door, that's a secure access door. It's my mobile phone is communicating with the door. It's giving authentication, and the door is opening in front of me. So these machines start talking to one another. Um, research has shown that we want to be connected all the time. So this is actually a real product. It's a, a, it's a, a, a baby a onesie. Uh, this, mon this device is monitoring breathing, movement, uh, temperature so that if uh, there are any issues or any problems with those readings, the mother or the father can be woken up and be alerted and can come and take care of the baby. So, you know, again, something that will eradicate or certainly uh, reduce the chances of cot deaths. 
And we've, we've demonstrated that also we are willing to pay for connected devices. Whenever we buy things, consumer electronics particularly, um, we're willing to pay a premium if that device is connected or connectable. So it can provide basic functionality. If, if the device is shipped and it's got a, a software fault, that software fault can be corrected. Firmware can be updated. But value can be added. New features can be enhanced. I bought an alarm clock that's connected to the internet. And the snooze button was tiny. And I was oversleeping in the mornings because I just couldn't hit this button. It was too small to hit, and my alarm wasn't uh, snoozing properly. And a few months after I'd bought this alarm clock, there was a software update which actually made the snooze button a lot bigger. So the manufacturer had obviously got a lot of feedback that this wasn't working for, for their customers. And so they changed the size of the, of the snooze button. So it's possible to add new features. Tesla, they, they provided new features to their cars, but you didn't have to pay for them as a, as, a, as a customer of Tesla. You got that upgrade, and the car could park itself, or there was a sports pack option, which made it go faster. These were all things that were added after, after sale uh, to improve the uh, customer's satisfaction with that product. And then there are transformative breakthroughs. There are these new disruptive products and services. Again, mentioned the, customer, uh, the connected car as an example of this. So, so at Akamai, um, we understand your needs. We're seeing around 15 to 30% of all web traffic. And so we're seeing how many of these companies are innovating and using the internet today. This is actually a screenshot, just to give you some examples of the, of the future, really. This is a screenshot from the Mission Impossible movie. This is Simon Pegg's eye. The bad guy has sent him to meet with Tom Cruise. And he's watching the whole conversation through this video camera that's embedded in Simon Pe Pegg's eye. This is the future. There are still camera versions of this today. There are still cameras that you can actually wear as a lens in your eye. Um, but we have the uh, first generation version of this with Periscope, where you can take your phone, you can uh, start the Periscope application, and you can start videoing um, what you're experiencing. You can share those. So every individual can become a broadcaster of HD video, which will, again, as this, as this technology is adopted, will dramatically increase uh, the consumption of bandwidth. But many, many more things are connecting. Uh, each one of you probably has three or four devices that are connected in the inter uh, to the internet with you today. And we're looking at embedding things within our body, potentially. If, you would, if I was to say to you, I'll embed this small implant in your hand that will alert if you've got signs of early signs of cancer, you probably would all want to line up and have one of these impl implanted into you outside. So, so more and more things are being connected. And this is kind of what the, uh, the, the spaghetti soup looks like. All of these people, this is from the movie Lucy, where she could actually see connectivity. She could see digi digital uh, information. And you can see that the, the sky is getting very crowded. This is actually a, a shot from uh, the Minority Report. This is Tom Cruise. Uh, he's walking into a shopping mall. Uh, the shopping mall is scanning his retina, and it's detecting that, uh, uh, or, or putting ads in front of him based on his preferences. Now, it, latency is really key here. Uh, we, we, we regard latency today as important when our pages don't load in, uh, quickly enough on our devices. But in the future, when these kinds of services are available, it's really important that that's, that flashes up immediately rather than before you've walked past the sign and don't see it. And latency is going to be particularly important for the connected car. If two of these things are, are coming to a crossroads, an intersection, it's kind of important that they figure out who's going to go first. And that, that, that happens in a timely fashion. So um, this one here is actually uh, from uh, uh, the, the movie Crank. This is Jason Statham. Uh, the bad guys have implanted a device that's actually uh, it could blow his heart up if these guys uh, decide that he doesn't do what they're, they're telling him to do. Uh, and every now and again, it needs a charge, because if the charge runs out, he also gets his heart blown up as well. So this is actually him with a battery charger charging his, uh, recharging his heart. But not too far from uh, reality. This is actually from a medical uh, supplier in the United States providing devices that sit outside of your body for monitoring your ECG and your heart rate. And this is a genuine article from a, a newspaper in the, the UK a few months ago, where this is a genuine concern. A lot of these uh, connected devices, they're thinking about the functionality. They're not necessarily thinking about the security concerns. And finally, all of these services, anything that I've talked about, has to be online all the time. We get frustrated when we can't get a connection. These services just don't work when they can't get a connection. So reliability is absolutely key. So uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of this session, you know, we see a lot of this traffic. We see a lot of these emerging trends. We're there with the infrastructure that we've deployed to make sure that as these new services become available, you as consumers get a great experience.
Thank you very much for your time.